Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna talk about the things that I think you have to have. Tools, resources, platforms. If you wanna run a thriving sports card business, let's go have some fun. We obviously focus on sports cards. You can see behind me, we have 38,000 plus cards in our store. We've completed 32,000 plus transactions over the past 10 years. And there's little nuances that we've learned that I wanna just pass on to you and hopefully you walk away with something that helps you be more productive, be more efficient. Every single thing we mention is in the links below in the show notes, so you can click it and find it. Some of those might have affiliate links enabled on those, just FYI. That means we might get a small commission on a few of those items if you do buy it. It'd be awesome if you do, that helps us out. There's probably gonna be one or two of these things that rub you the wrong way or, or, or ruffle your feathers, but that's okay. The point of this is to help you be more productive in what you're doing on your reselling side. First, let's talk about scanners. Scanners are probably the most important thing. It's been said that every incredible listing starts with one heck of a good scan. Not really, but seriously, it's important to focus on getting a good scanner. There's really two sides of the the scanning equation, you got the flatbed scanner, which is gonna allow you to, to scan graded cards and lots and uh, you know sets, random cards that you don't wanna run through a feed scan. That flatbed scanner is gonna be extremely important to making sure you have the versatility to scan all the good things that you want. The gold standard in the industry is the Epson V600. I've used it for over five years. I cannot speak highly enough about the Epson V600. It is a workhorse, never breaks down, provides great scans, good color, allows you to scan with slabs and not ever think twice about the scan being perfect. The other side of that equation is the feed scanner. And the feed scanner is perfect for cards that are, you know, lower dollar, I'd say sub $10, high volume. You wanna get front and back scans at the same time. You want it auto cropped, all those things that high volume, high productivity type sports card resellers, they need a good feed scanner. Fujitsu has doubled down and has been investing in the sports card market for the past few years, and they do an outstanding job with their scanners. I've used other scanners, but I go back to the Fujitsu, the 7000 series, I believe it's the 7160. It's kind of the, I would say the base level that I would enter in. And then you got the new 8000 series that allows you to scan with top loaders. It provides a little bit more speed, uh, but the 7160, is incredible it's well worth i want to say it's in the three to five hundred dollar range depending on if it's you know new or refurbished but the fujitsu line of feed scanners is perfecto when it comes to reliability and knowing that you're going to get good scans consistently number two if you're scanning well you're not going to have to worry about imaging software too much but there's still going to be a lot of times where you got to do cropping you got to do skewing you got to put little you know, text over an image. Uh, you're not gonna wanna clean up images a lot because you don't wanna do that. The second you start cleaning up images, you're gonna get people saying, hey, you sent me a card that looks perfect in the picture and there's flaws everywhere. You do not clean up sports card images on scans, but you're gonna crop and you do all that other stuff. I use really one of two platforms. When it comes to cropping, exporting, creating images in that kind of a fast environment, I use a platform called GIMP, G-I-M-P. It's a free open source platform, kind of a poor man's alternative to Photoshop. It's great. I, again, I've used it forever. It just works. It works on Mac. It works on PC. It does its job very, very well. But if you're looking to step it up a level and do banners and logos and, and create a lot of the graphics, that maybe help your brand, I use Canva. I've standardized on Canva. Canva is the perfect platform for me because I can use it in a cloud-based web environment. Uh, and Canva provides everything. It's one of the fastest growing platforms that's ever existed when it comes to illustrations and graphics. They're doing it right. They got like a billion graphics that have been made. They have all the features that you'd want. Go Just go use Canva. You can use it for free or if you want to use the Canva Pro, you can actually click our link and get a discount on that. Okay, number three. Maybe the most important thing outside of the sports card itself is protecting the sports card. And card supplies and having the right card supplies on hand at all times is vital. You don't wanna be in a situation where you sell card and you don't have the supplies to make it work right. I've kind of standardized on the way I, I view supplies and, and let me share with you what I've learned. Now, when it comes to penny sleeves, for me, okay, hold on, did I lose them? I did, I lost my penny sleeves. Of any of the card supplies, the penny sleeves are the most important because it's gonna be what really protects your card from all of the elements. Uh, it's gonna be in your box storage box. It's gonna be the first thing that goes in the sleeve. It's gonna be what you put your card in first. 
You want to pick the right penny sleeve, I promise you. And the old school way of, of using penny sleeves to me is long gone. And I wouldn't have said that even 18 months ago, but about a year ago, I got introduced to smooth sleeves. And let me tell you what, this has revolutionized the way I've used sleeves. They figured it out. Here's why these are unique and you can click the link and get a 20% discount. I actually reached out to Smooth Sleeves and said, you have to give me some sort of promo because I want to recommend these to the viewers. They're stretchy. They have a little flap on top, a little tab that allows you to get cards in without dinging the corners or the edges. And then as a reseller, you know that when you're flipping through, I'll show it here, you're flipping through, you want to be able to grab that tab and pull a card out without top, you know, grabbing the top edge of a card. And the stretchiness is awesome too, because not only can you fit standard size cards, you can also fit thicker cards in there, like smaller rel relics and even a few larger relics. They don't really advertise that, but uh, they are stretchy and they do a good job of fitting relics in here as well. Even some vintage that you can't fit in the standard sleeves. So go grab Smooth Sleeves, use promo code CHASING, or CHASING CARDBOARD, two words, uh, and you'll get 20% off any amount of sleeves that you order with Smooth Sleeves, okay? Second would be the hard shell top loaders. Now top loaders are interesting because it's really a personal preference thing for a lot of people. When you buy collections, you probably get a lot of top loaders that you end up being able to reuse. There's really three sizes that I typically have on hand at all times when it comes to the standard hard shell plastic. And that is the standard three by four normal thickness top loader. Everybody has those. You probably have stacks and stacks of those. You want to have those on hand at all times. Second would be the semi-thick, which fits normal top loaders. Think of like a, a normal um, top series one flagship type relic. You can fit that in a 79 point uh, thickness top loader. Have those on hand. And then you got the super thick, the super chunky relics. They fit in the, the 138 to 168 point uh, top loader. So have those on hand as well. Those are the three kind of the ranges that I like to always have. But I will say, over the past few years, I've moved away from the hard shell top loaders. When I'm going to buy a top loader, I'm actually going to buy a semi-rigid and or card saver one because I like the flexibility those provide, both in terms of getting all kinds of cards in there, shipping because I can put cardboard right over them, not have to worry about it, and also the ability to store really easily and sort through and find the things that you need. So I've actually moved to semi-rigid, and I'm going to show you a box Ultra Pro that I got uh, by the case, but I actually really like the BCW ones as well. Uh, and you can click the BCW or Ultra Pro link, both Amazon and BCW. I think BCW gives you a 10% discount if you use the code, uh, and you can find a direct link to those below in the show notes. But semi-rigid for me is what I go buy now instead of buying the harder shell top loaders. Okay, number three will be team bags. And team bags are important because a lot of times you think that the old school way of doing it, once again, putting tape over a top loader is the right way to ship. And I'm here to tell you that it's not. Don't ship with tape over a top loader. Put your top loader inside of a team bag or better yet, buy graded card sleeves. And you can put single cards, you can put graded cards, you can put lots of top loaders and you'll be a lot happier. I like having these on hand. Buy them by the bulk, again, links below. Buy them by the bulk and have these on hand at all times and that'll solve all your problems for you because you can fit everything you possibly want inside of a graded team bag and then strip those off or put, put cardboard around them and you're good to go. Okay, fourth, sorting trays. Look, we all know the drill. You go to sort cards, you put team sets together, you put lots together, you're filling your table and your kitchen with all these cards, and then you realize how frustrated you get when these piles are overlapping with each other, cards are dings, it's just a frustrating ordeal. If you're not using a sorting tray, stop what you're doing right now and go buy yourself a 30 or $40 sorting tray, buy a couple of them and have them on hand. It will save you so much hassle and frustration. I promise you, you wanna go get yourself a sorting tray. It, it improves your efficiency, improves your sorting time, keeps things nice and clean, and it helps you stay conditioned I mean that, like how many times you're over here doing this, moving, stretching, stretching, and you feel like you've, you know, you've been through a, a, a fight. You don't wanna do that. Have a sorting tray, it allows you to kind of stay conditioned, It'll, it allows you to sleep better. It's well worth the investment. Speaking of sleepless nights, whether we're on the road filming full episodes or back at HQ running our business, sleep is critical. I'm a side sleeper and I needed a solution to my inconsistent sleep and I finally found it with the pillow cue. 
It's a pillow made specifically for side sleepers, and it solved my headaches, my shoulder and neck pains, and frustrating nights in the hotel. Go check it out and get 40% off your first pillow. There's nothing worse than hearing the great sound of the cash register on the eBay app, looking at your phone, seeing a card sold, realizing that it sold for a good price. You wait a couple minutes, you see that the buyer just paid, and you're stoked. The next morning you go out to ship your particular card, and you don't have the right shipping supplies. Please, no, 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 no! Okay, here is what I keep in stock at all times, and I would say 99% of the time, I'm sticking with these three bubble envelopes. Now, if you ship eBay standard envelope, you're gonna have the regular self-adhesive envelopes with some cardboard, and that's what you're gonna use. But when it comes to lots and graded cards, you're gonna wanna use bubble mailers. First is the triple zero pound zero 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 four by eight. I would say nearly every single one of my cards or at, at least 80% plus of my cards end up in this particular envelope first. This is the envelope where my cards go in. And sometimes I just put the label, the thermal label right over the top here and I'm good to go. But most of the time I'm taking this particular four by eight and I'm putting it in a pound zero, single zero, six by 10 envelope. So I stick it inside of here and I double wall this thing with padding and we're good to go. Uh, this also gives me the flexibility to have these on hand so that if I have lots or larger cards, tall boys, I have this to ship my cards in. So these kind of go hand in hand for me at all times. I would say 20 to 30% of my inventory is being double packaged and Look, if there's one thing that you know is gonna happen every single time with your buyers, it's they're gonna, they're gonna receive your shipment and they're gonna have that first impression of what you did with shipping. The last thing you want them doing is doubting your ability to ship before they even see the card. So I love kind of over delivering on the shipping side and a good way of doing that is using two bubble mailers. A little more expensive, adds a few pennies, but well worth it if you ask me. And then the last bubble mailer that I have is a pound one a seven and a quarter by 12. Um, this is great if you have you know, turkey reds, T3s. If you have larger lots, you can even put small boxes inside this and then you can ship this inside of what you should always have on hand is your free priority pad and mail envelope. Now, uh, I'm just gonna say this once because most of you probably already know this, but if you are not going to USPS's free supply site and getting all your priority mail supplies shipped to your house for free, then you need to add that into your schedule of activities to do. This, I mean, I use this probably more than some small countries when it comes to the number of priority flat rate padded envelopes that I ship out every single week. It's insane the number of these that I use and I get them all for free. It's just another layer of padding too that they're paying for. Um, granted, you have to ship USPS, but that's what I use most of the time anyway, so it's well worth it. Link in the show notes, go find that link, go to USPS's site and get all the free supplies that you want. It's a great deal. Okay, when it comes to boxes, here's what I like to keep on hand. I keep on hand at all times two sizes of boxes. The first is the six by six by four, and this one's good because it fits two blaster boxes in it. I used to sell a lot of blaster boxes, and this one's a, this one's perfect because I can fit one with plenty of room with, for padding, or I can fit two with plenty of room for padding. But more importantly, this is a perfect size for just getting small sets, 300 count boxes, 100 count boxes of cards, and in packs and or graded cards. It's just a great size. And then I have one more larger size, a 10 by six by six, slightly bigger, and you can fit a longer set box, but you can also fit um, rows of graded cards that I like putting in there. So those are the two boxes I have on hand at all times. Don't forget to grab priority flat rate boxes as well to have in your inventory. Okay, number six, this is guaranteed to improve your listing time by over 300% scientifically proven. I've seen the scientists, they know what they're talking about. Getting the right apparel. Seriously, how cool are these hats? Sorry for the hair, hat hair. Look, we didn't say this to people, but uh, inside of these, uh, let me get you a good angle. Inside of our hat, we have serial numbers. We had a hundred of these made. We've sold a whole lot of them. There might be a few left by the time that you see this episode. Go grab one, and if you're going to the National, that serial number is gonna come into play. So just be aware. It's gonna be something fun that we're gonna be doing. Uh, but more importantly, these hats and our gear, they just help you list faster. Not scientifically proven, but just wear some good gear. You'll like it. 
And don't forget, we have a huge library full of complete episodes of us on the road, viewing collections, negotiating deals, and uncovering incredible stories within the hobby. Be sure to check those out on the channel and look for new episodes every two weeks. Number six, let me give you a good one here. This is one that I wish, this is one that I wish I would have learned about day one from selling. And that is this, I'm gonna make this very clear for you. Buy a thermal printer. Seriously, whatever you have to do, find a way to get a thermal printer. I've used the Rolo, it's on Amazon site, and the Rolo thermal labels. Since I found out about it probably three years ago, I've run the numbers. Trust me, the calculations make sense. Go buy yourself a thermal printer. It will transform the way you optimize your shipping routine. Okay, and last but not least, accounting and listing software. These are the, the things that I, I really know are nuanced because there's lots of options with this, but let me just tell you two things really quick. One, when you're running a, a kind of a high powered, high volume business on eBay or Shopify or whatever you're using, you wanna make sure that your back end is handled very well. I really like two of them. One's into it, QuickBooks, QuickBooks Online, QuickBooks for your PC or Mac, doesn't matter. QuickBooks has an, an, a stellar integration with eBay. You can you know, move all your transactions, integrate all that stuff into QuickBooks and, and be able to bookkeep very, very easily. So I recommend using QuickBooks. That's the best of the best. Uh, you can also use FreshBooks. I like FreshBooks. Uh, I've had really good success with FreshBooks. If you sell cards outside of eBay, maybe at card shows or events, and you need to invoice people, FreshBooks has a really good invoicing platform that you can use to run that as well. But do not take that lightly. Learn how to do that right. It will save you a ton of time and frustrations and sleepless nights on the back end. So do that right. And then finally, when it comes to listing software, again, personal preferences, guys. I understand that everyone has their little quirks, but I've used a lot of these listing platforms and here's what I've standardized on. One, I really do like Inkfrog. I, I used Inkfrog for many years, um, almost seven years in fact. Up until recently, about six months ago, I started having issues with their, just their performance and their ability to always be online. They had a lot of outages and things like that. And I wrote them multiple times, just complaining and, and, and voicing my frustration and feedback. And I did not get a lot of progress made on that end. And so I had no choice but to move away from Inkfrog into a listing software that I really enjoy called 6-Bit. Now, 6-Bit is probably more of a professional type system. If you're, if you're selling hundreds or thousands of cards a month, 6-Bit's perfect for you because it's a full-on management piece for your business. You can schedule listings out, you can monitor bookings, you can monitor consignments, um, you can you know, integrate a good listing template, which is important for me, and you can do things very systematically 6-bit is ideal. Now I will say it's not available for Mac. So you actually have to have a PC for this. I'm a Mac guy. So it was definitely frustrating. I, I went to Costco and bought a PC, a Windows PC for the first time since I don't even remember, maybe since I was in high school. Uh, and I did it just for 6-bit. That's how important it was for me. Uh, there's a link to, to go check out 6-bit below. Go check it out, see if it's something you want. It's a little pricey. I wanna say I pay 70 bucks a month, but when you're running a, a when, it, when it's your full-time job, you wanna do it right, and 6-Bit provides you the ability to do that. So there you go. Those are some things that are core to me running my business, my sports card business. There's a lot of other little things that, uh, that I obviously use day in and day out. What are the things that you believe are core to you when you run your business? Let me know in the comments below and let me know if you want me to dig into any of these and or do like a back-end bookkeeping video or something more in depth. Happy to do that. We're on the road all the time for these, these full-on episodes of Chasing Cardboard, but we still do run a business and we'd love to help you out. So I hope you found some benefit in that. Have yourself a great week. Keep chasing.